Well, Miss O'Neill, it was simple. I defeated those evil turtles, and they can't hurt nobody no more. All thanks to my best pal, Bebop. Oh, my aching head. I should have never ran away from Technodrome home after April shot me and Shredder blamed me for Metalhead blowing us up. Rocksteady, this is Master Splinter. Oh, God, Master Splinter, what are you doing here? I have sought out Master Scruffy. Scruffy? Oh, oh, Scruffy! The very same ninja master who taught me, just as I was once Hamato Yoshi, he was my double half-uncle, Hamato Lester. Together we lived in the sewers, away from the scorn of the outside world. I can't believe that happened. Did someone call the police? Just as the mutagen was dumped into the sewers, Hamato Lester didn't realize that he was standing directly under the sewage drain, leading up to 6,000 personal toilets of New York's most foul residents. And well, let's just say those toilets were flushed simultaneously as the ooze entered every orifice of his body, turning him into the scruffy, the nastiest martial artist alive. Hey, like Elvis in Blue Hawaii, my name is Scruffy. I trained Steven Seagal, Cameron Mitchell, and Pat Morita's fourth cousin. Here is Scruffy now. I, um, I have to go to uh, save a lot, so... Uh, you in good hands. Don't sweat it, G. Good luck. I don't know what to say, meeting a big fancy martial artist like you. I, I, I bet you could train me to be even stronger than those titles. Oh, I don't know about stronger than a toilet, but I'll try. Think fast. Ow. Ow. Oh, Ow. no. First lesson is you wash my Humvee. It was a gift from Putin and Tupac, so don't mess it up, Holmes. Oh, Lord. What have I gotten myself into now? Master Scruffy, I don't think I can clean another inch. I'm exhausted. Did you know I invented the karate chop in 1961? I used it to kill some rando named Tang Shen. True story, bro. That don't sound too heroic to me, Master Scruffy. Let's talk and more washing, you little stool. Like Ephesus in Blue Hawaii. Do you want some pizza? Oh, I sure would, Master Scruffy. I'm starving. Well, too bad, fatty. I put you on diet till you die. Like doctor on 600 pound life. Who, who did that? I don't want to know who desecrated the hat of Scruffy. I demand. Oh, no. Oh, God. One the no stay. Well, well, well. Look at what the rat dragged in. I'm going to make it real simple. I'm going to count to ten. And if you don't let my best pal go, well, let's just say I don't know my numbers too good. One, two, ten. Say your prayers. Say hi to Elvis for me. <laughs> In Blue Hawaii. Hey, Rocksteady, it's okay. I ain't gonna let nobody hurt you. It's all over now. Bebop, is that you? I can't believe you came. Let's get you out of here. Bebop, I'll never run away again. Let's just go home to the Technodrome. Hey, <laughs> You thought you could kill Scruffy? <laughs> then the Admiral Buffalo really wants says no way to say not to get to the free clinic. <laughs>boys and fangirls jared here with another review from fanboys forever today we're going to be having a look at the brand new super 7 ultimate series teenage mutant ninja turtles rock steady figure now these aren't based on the cartoon or anything like that or a movie they are indeed based on the original 80s toys much like masters of the universe classics were based strictly on those vintage he-man toys these two are based strictly on the playmates action figures you can see in the box that he has an impressive loadout of accessories with everything that you might expect Rocksteady to come with, including all of his vintage accessories. And here is the bio for Rocksteady on the back. Keep in mind, Rocksteady does have a slip cover that comes over the box with this cool graphic. On the back, it says Turtles, and at the top, it says Ultimates. All right, let's go ahead and get Rocksteady right out of the box. So these aren't really supposed to be based on the cartoon or anything like that. And of course, Rocksteady in particular has some pretty big differences to his cartoon counterpart. So let's go ahead and do a comparison of the original Rocksteady action figure. You can see the original Rocksteady here on the right has very much the same sorts of details, but this has been amplified by about 10. Uh, every little crease and wart and wrinkle and the kind of tough leather exterior of the rhino skin 
has been brought to life beautifully here, including all little details on the belt. And it really is amazing work on their part at Super 7. So one funny thing about my childhood with Rocksteady is that I always had a hard time uh, getting him mixed up name-wise with Bebop. And eventually the way that I figured it out when I was little is I said, okay, he's the color of rocks. So he's kind of that gray. Funny little way that I used to do it. Anyway, though, it would definitely be quite easy to look at Rocksteady and say that he may very well be the most detailed in general release from Super 7 so far. I mean, just looking at all the folds and the skin, even things like down to the combat belt and the little turtle shells, and even things like the hat and the goggles. These are just immaculately detailed. And it's funny because they keep having new uh, champions in this line for each new wave they release. It seems like there's always something that's trying to one-up the last release for the Detail King. And so far, I do think that it could very well be Rocksteady. So one thing that's interesting about the original Rocksteady figure is the really, really long snout that they wanted to package with the toy. But they said that they found out from the retail partners that that wouldn't actually fit in the blister card. So instead, they had to end up compromising on that sculpt and shorten it down. If you look at this, it does appear that they've been able to restore some of that original intent with a snout that is incredibly long. As a matter of fact, the way it comes packaged is kind of like to the side like this. And the boxes are huge, so uh, it does have some room, but this is getting just insane at this point. And you can see when you have the figure just in full view that there's definitely a really big proportionality kind of shift with this body being gigantic on its own and then this massive head up here. So it's really incredible to see them work with those kind of abnormal proportions and make it work in something that would typically not work very well. Moving on down to the belt, this is important to note because I love all these little kind of rivets and uh, kind of like clamps and things. And what's really cool is that the shell, if you notice, is modeled not after the standard shell, but instead modeled after the new shells that they've sculpted for the uh, new releases of the turtles. Of course, what makes those fairly interesting is all the ridge work that's on the shells that just hadn't been there before. And as you can see, the little mini shell sculpt that he has matches that ridge work. So I think that's an interesting point of consistency visually. I also like the tiny little utility belt pouches that he has. Batman would be proud or ashamed. I'm not sure which one. On the back, we have these really cool ridges as if there was kind of a skeletal structure and the bone was kind of trying to protrude out back here through the spine as a result of the mutation. The army hat itself is not removable, but the detail in the paintwork is some of my favorite detail that we've actually had in this line because look at how cool this wash work here is. Now it's not entirely consistent because you can see where it kind of gives out around the strap line there, but I would assume that's a product of them trying to uh, keep the paint separated out and it's a spray and they have little covers that go over it in the factory. I also like the kind of goggles here. I think these are really neat. The one thing that I will say as a criticism in general is that I would have loved it if they could have found a way for the goggles to have been removable and to have actually tried putting them over the eyes. Now, the funny thing is these goggles, they're, they're not gonna work with the spacing of these eyes because they're so far apart, but they were trying to replicate the original toy. How great would it have been if they had come up with a way to have some goggles that would have fit his face or maybe even an alternate head. Moving on down to the pants, these are probably the least interesting in terms of detail, but there's some neat stuff going on here. There's kind of basic, you know, uh, military slacks. Uh, the combat boots are pretty nice, but it's sort of boring to see the transition from the brown to more brown right up here. So there's not really much going on there. The highlight of this figure is in the actual body, the upper body. Now, this is interesting though is we actually have kind of like a stitch work here where his arm has been cut maybe by one of the turtles. That's neat. I also like the little combat watch. We have a little gauntlet that looks like there may be shells. Uh, it's funny to see how violent toys were in the 80s compared to now. We can also see the knife here has a really cool serrated tip. And the gun here, I wish actually had a little more detail. It seems awfully basic and they might have missed an opportunity to have painted some silver brush strokes on this or give it a wash or something because there's just not much going on. The actual shirt itself, the sleeveless tank top here, has a great cross stitching pattern in it that kind of suggests all sorts of fabric and woven detail. The neck ridges under the head are very impressive as well, just like a real rhino might have. 
sculpt-wise, I'll be very impressed if any of their future monster releases can beat Rocksteady. Bebop was an amazing figure, but Rocksteady really goes that extra mile. Speaking of that, I know we'll do articulation in a moment, but I just want you to see them together and see what an awesome pair that these two make. Now, I have his legs spread apart quite a bit. That's why there's a little bit of a height differential, but I want to show you what happens when I straighten out those legs. All right, so as you can see, once you have him kind of straightened out a little bit, he does have a pretty commanding uh, height differential here because of the massive nature of the head. So they're almost right on, but they're not exactly eye to eye when you do it like this because Rocksteady is just a slight, slight bit taller than Bebop. So uh, it's, it's interesting, but especially because you're going to have their legs kind of hunched just a little bit, they're pretty much like this going to look practically exactly the same height. So I think it works very well. Speaking of height, it is important to see how they compare with a human character like April, since indeed they are going to be kidnapping this figure quite often in your collection, you know, as long as she forgot her little buddy at home. So you can see that with, uh, you know, a pose like this, which is what you would have seen in the cartoon quite often, that it looks about right scale-wise, uh, especially with the added kind of height uh, with Rocksteady here. It really does make a cool display once you have this going. Maybe even more interesting once it's turned around like this. It's also very important to see how Shredder might look with Rocksteady. And I like this dynamic that Rocksteady is so much larger than the Shredder, but fears him. So I think it's a cool visual. And of course, we probably need to get a good idea of what Rocksteady looks like with one of the actual Turtles figures. So this should give you a really good idea of just how massive this guy is. And just so you can see, if he's standing straight up, he almost reaches the 8-inch category. So it's kind of hard to believe. Let's go ahead and talk articulation with this guy. To start, the head can turn side to side. It can go up a really good amount, actually. I actually like that quite a bit. I think that's about the limit. And it really can't go down very much. It can just kind of look straight ahead, but it's because of the sculpting. It just, there's really nothing else you can do. You can cock the head side to side a little bit, so that looks pretty good. Moving on to the shoulders, we do have a hinge right here. And it's a little hard to work with, but you can get it right at 90 degrees. You can probably go further than that, but that would involve kind of digging the shoulder into the chest a little bit more. There is not any kind of upper bicep swivel as we see in a lot of these figures. So that is interesting that it was left out, but it doesn't matter too much because we have an elbow swivel. There is just a single jointed elbow like all the other releases in this line. And it does just about 90 degrees, so that's not too bad. But of course, at this price point, you would almost expect it to go a little bit more. There is a hinge here at the wrist, and it can rotate just like the other alternate hands can. Now with the chest over here, there isn't any kind of like diaphragm joint or ab crunch, but at the waist, there is a little bit of give back and forth, but nothing that can actually lock too well. You can do that and that, so you, it's barely noticeable. It does rotate all the way around, of course. Up here at the legs, you can see that there is a swivel at each of the thighs. Now, you can hear that my paint had to kind of break a little for these to work, but these are so big that you shouldn't have to worry about too much in terms of breakage. In terms of splits, he can do a perfect split, but these are going to be stretched a little with the shells. So they're flexible though, and they're definitely meant to do that. Down here at the knee, you can see that there is a rotation, and there is a single joint that can't quite do 90 degrees, so it's a little disappointing. Down here, there is an actual boot cut right here, and there is a really good ankle pivot, and it can go up and down. So once again, terrific ankle articulation, uh, more and more, I'm of the opinion that ankle articulation matters almost more than anything because you're able to get some incredible poses that the figure can actually hold. Even a figure that's this top heavy isn't going to tip over. I see people complaining all the time, and I've recently seen more of them complaining about this very figure, saying that these things just can't hold their own weight and they don't stand. Well, I mean, this was pretty easy, and I did it pretty much live without any other tries. You'll just have to take my word on that. So I, I don't have that problem a whole lot, so I really can't empathize too much. But that's not to say that your copy may not have those issues because, you know, it's a mass-produced figure. As for the accessories, there is the serrated blade knife like you saw earlier, just like the original figure. And you have the gun that doesn't really have as many paint apps as I would like, or any for that matter. He does come with the sewer lid shield, which I really like, and I do like that they dry brushed a little bit of silver paint onto that to at least give it a little something. Probably more could have been done, but I still like it. 
has a little handle there, the figure can hold it. You do get alternate fist and hands, which look pretty cool. And you get an assortment of grenades. Lastly, you just get a representation of all of the weapons i just shown you, only on sprues for a weapon tree. Now, unfortunately, this is not able to stand. If you want to display it, you'll have to lean it on something, but it can't stand on its own. That's it for accessories, and you may be wondering, well, why doesn't he come with all the other stuff that all the other figures do, like April having three heads, or the turtles having alternate portraits and all of that? Well, it's because of how massive this guy really is. Since this is practically an 8-inch scaled monster figure, that $55 starts to sound at least a little more reasonable for a guy like this versus one of the smaller figures like the Turtles or April or something like that. It's really in the giant monster figures like Mutagen Man and uh, Bebop and Rocksteady that you're going to find some of the bigger value for this line. That's the funny thing about Ultimates, is the scales can be pretty disparate between the figures, but the price is sort of consistent. It almost makes me wonder if there wouldn't be perhaps a little less disappointment about the price if they scaled the prices a little differently, depending on what kind of release it was. Say, for instance, some of the turtles might be closer to, say, $40, while some of these guys may be closer to $60. But at the same time, I think that would cause its own unique problems. But I do feel like I got my money's worth with this guy because I do feel that size and detail work very much justifies a limited run figure being $55 in this case. If you can't already tell, Rocksteady ended up being a figure that I was very pleased with. And more so than a lot of the other releases, I actually felt that he earned that $55 price tag for being so massive. Although, uh, it would be easy to wonder why he doesn't include that alternative head. I'm not really sure what else they could have done with it. Besides, like I said, maybe do one without the hat and the goggles or helmet or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that might have been cool to have had something a little more cartoon accurate, perhaps. But the way it stands, I still feel good about this purchase considering how huge the figure was. And if you have Bebop, like I do, then Rocksteady is kind of a no-brainer as a purchase. Alright guys, I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Of course, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we are going to keep reviewing all of the Super 7 Ultimates Ninja Turtles releases right here on the channel, including the brand new Wave 3, so make sure you go back and check those out. Alright guys, God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out! Scruffy will return and license to drive. Well, that's all, folks. <laughs>